All right guys, so in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to start a business manager account and also how to set up a Facebook page because you are gonna to need to make a Facebook page to you set up your business manager account and what a business manager account is basically, it's just a uh, an account where you can manage all of your clients in one place uh, very easily because if you try to do it through the normal ads manager, it's just gonna be a hassle, it's gonna be really confusing. So basically you create an account, you go to business.facebook.com, you're gonna create an account, you're gonna log into Facebook. I'm not gonna walk you through the exact setup because it's super easy, all you do is just log into Facebook and a couple other things. So I'm gonna log in myself here um, and be back with you guys in a second once I'm already signed in. And you can just follow the directions that Facebook gives you to actually create your account and then I can give you kind of an overview of how to create your Facebook page next. All right, so now I am inside my business manager and this is, gonna look what it, th and this is what it's gonna look like once you have a couple of clients. So my business name is Wilson Media. You can name your business whatever you want. The reason I don't have a video on this is because the name of your business does not matter. All that's going, all that's going to do is waste your time. Um, so don't worry about your business name. But anyways, make your ad account and you're going to need to then connect it to a certain Facebook page. So I'm sure in the process sometimes somewhere it's going to ask you to connect to a Facebook page. So how do you create a Facebook page? You go to your Facebook on the desktop and you go here and you go to create Facebook page and you are going to choose a local business or place. Well, actually, no, we're, no, we're not going to do this. Uh, we're going to do a company and we are going to put your name. We're going to do marketing wherever that is or advertising, whichever they have. Uh, we'll just put consulting agency for now. Uh, there might be a better fit, but I'm not going to waste your guys' time going all the way through these. And we're just going to put Wilson Media. We're going to get started. All right, so Wilson Media 2. All and you're going to add a profile picture, etc., etc. Basically, just follow the steps. It's super easy to create a Facebook page. And really, from there, you can invite all your friends. I'm not going to go and create it all for you. You can write in a bio and about section, all that, all that kind of stuff. Let me guys just show you, show you through the Facebook page and what all you need to get set up. So I'm going to go to my Facebook page, Wilson Media, and basically you can get up. You can get if you want a logo. You don't have to have a logo. I wouldn't even suggest it at first, but you can get one on Fiverr for really cheap if you need to. Pexels.com is where you can get uh, a nice picture you can put here. You basically put your story you just keep it super simple you don't need to waste a ton of time on this your Facebook page isn't really gonna get you any clients anyways it's not a big deal don't even worry about posting to it or anything like that you can maybe make like one post but don't worry about posting on it people aren't gonna look at your Facebook page anyways it doesn't matter right now okay trust me you're not gonna get any clients this way so don't like you're gonna say like oh a clients gonna go look at my Facebook page it doesn't matter they might not even be able to find it it's not a big deal trust me um, but basically just going to fill out all the information, uh, verify your account if you can, but you probably can't because it's not a local business. So don't even worry about that. You're going to have to have an LLC. So put your name, put your at name, and basically just link that to your business managers. And that's pretty much it. That's how you create a Facebook page. You set up a business manager account. Um, I'm not going to walk through the entire thing because it's really simple and you're going to be able to figure out easily. You could ask me questions if you have any, um, but it's just going to be a hassle for me to create a new account and then go ahead and delete it. But anyways, See you guys in the next video. All right, guys. So in this video, I'm going to be walking you through the business manager, how to use everything in it, and how to kind of navigate your 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 way around the space. So first off, when you first get your client, what are you going to do? So you're going to go over here to business settings. This is once you're logged into the business manager. And remember, uh, the business manager is business.facebook.com. And then you're going to log in, create your account, just like we showed you in the last video. And basically, you're going to create that business settings. And this is where you're going to add an, a business. So you're going to, there's a couple things you're going to need when you add a business, which I'll go over also in the meeting business video, the, the things that you're going to need to get from the client. But uh, when you add, first thing you're going to need to do, you're going to create a new ad account for them. You're going to create a new ad account. You're going to need their, um, their card number and you're going to enter in their card details, their credit card details for, so you can spend the ad account. If the client isn't okay with putting in their credit card, they can either pay you in money beforehand or the other option is if they already have an ad account, you can request access to their ad account. Uh, I don't recommend doing this one though because 
typically clients get really confused on how to accept the access to the ad account. Um, so if you guys ever have problems, just simply look up like things um, on Google and you can pretty easily figure out like Facebook has directions on how to do all of these things. So like for, for example, um, if your client is trying to figure out how to add you as an ad account, you can either make a video tutorial for them or you can send them a link to Facebook. But besides that, this is how you create a new ad account. You're going to basically name it and you're going to put that there, whatever your business name is. And you can do a payment method if you have it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. And then basically just, just so you guys know, the reason you would might have a, um, someone might use their account. Like the reason you want to use your own ad account preferably is one, because it's easier to set up. You can do it so much easier. It's so much easier when you get their credit card, especially if you're doing a free trial and you get their credit card for the free trial, then you can say, can I, you can ask them, can I use the same credit card to charge you the monthly payment? That just makes it so easy to transition. Um, but the other side of it is, they could kind of steal your ads if they wanted to. Now that's not a huge issue, but that's just something that, the, that's why it's a little bit better to create your own ad account. And later on, you will need to re request more ad accounts because you can only create five. So make sure you're creating them with a thought process in your head and make sure you're using those five to your most effectiveness because to request more, you're gonna have to be able to do some ad spend first. So make sure you're using those five first accounts wisely. Um, and I'm going to put a link to request more later on, but you do have to be able to, you have to spend like a certain amount. I don't know exactly what it is, but it might, might be like $1,500 ad spend. You have to spend before you actually get to do that on your account. So let's walk you guys through the business manager. Basically, that's how you do an ad account. You have them all listed here. Um, this is if you want to. So the way this works is if you basically have multiple people in your business, so you have a business partner, or you have somebody that wants to do it, or you want to add your client. Uh, access so you basically have people here and you can you have to be friends with them and you can add a person you can actually you don't even have to be friends with them you can put their email in they're gonna get a request and then from there you can basically give once they have a request of access to that then you can basically add people to this so as you can see here I can add people to any, any of these ad accounts so I have somebody that works for with me I have a couple people that work with me so I add them to my ad accounts so this is another thing that you need to do when you first get a client you're going to need to um, request access to their page. So you're going to do add and you're going to do a request access to a page. And then they're going to go in just so you guys know how, what this looks like. They're going to go in and they have to do it on desktop. They're going to go in and they're going to go to their page. Let's just do this one for example. And we're going to go to business manager. And this is what your clients basically going to do when you have to request access. So this is actually best if you can do this in the meeting with them and uh, do it live with them because it just makes it so much easier than trying to do this on the phone because typically clients get so confused on what to do. But basically, um, you go to page rules here and then your request is going to show up here and then you're going to basically just accept access to the request. Okay, so from there, that's the pages. You've also got... And pixels is pretty important so you can just create more pixels if you need them you have access to the pixels uh, and we're gonna go over pixels here in one of the video next couple videos so if you don't understand that yet that's okay um, catalogs that's a whole other thing to get into I'm not probably not gonna get too much into this this is uh, really this is pretty high level stuff um, Instagram accounts of course same way if your client has an Instagram account you should be you can do it that way um, but at the same time, if, they, if their Facebook is connected to their Instagram account, it should work anyways. Um, and then for that, most of these are pretty pretty good. You got projects, so this isn't really important. There's partners. This really isn't important. None of this, all of this, most of this stuff over here is just all like higher end level stuff. So next, let's go into the ad manager. And, and then also you have, so basically when you first log in, you're going to get back to this screen again. And you're going to, all your ad accounts are going to show up here. You can change the last seven days. You can see how much you spent. It kind of gives you an overview. And then all your pages are going to show up here. And this is what I do every day. I have a little bookmark here. I click on whatever ad account I'm working on. I might pull up multiple of my clients and start looking through their ads, making sure they're looking all nice. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to be going over ad accounts. So I see you guys there. What's up guys? So in this video, we're going to be going over uh, the ad ma ads manager. So within the business manager, you're going to have all these ad accounts. Now we're going to go over here and do the ads manager, or if we click on one of these accounts, we're going to get taken to the ads manager. So I'm going to click on my own account 
and see as you can see you got taken to the ads manager account here so I'm gonna give you guys an introduction on what this is because it can look really confusing at first but once you get to know it you're gonna love it um, honestly it's so much simpler than Google AdWords so I'm really happy to say that because honestly it's so much so much easier but um, so basically you can choose your ad account from here you can type in the name search it I kind of have a lot so um, sometimes I have to search it but if you guys are starting out you probably just scroll through them but uh, anyways you are this is basically your ads manager just dashboard as a whole so you have your campaigns and your ad sets and your ads we should have talked about this earlier um, Facebook ads kind of work like a tree so first you have your campaigns for then you have your ad set then you have your ads so let's kind of show you guys what that might look like so you click on one campaign and then it'll open up all the ad sets for that campaign so as you can see that three ad sets so the ad sets is kind of like what you're doing for the targeting for the most part the campaigns is basically just like the campaign what your objective is for the most part and then you got the ads which is the actual like ad copy things like that okay so that's that's these three columns here and this is how you do it so how do you analyze an ad well you kind of have these so you have these results right here on what's an ad so maybe I want to see what I'm gonna go to lifetime so you guys can see like actual results of ads kind of give you some numbers but what do you want? What if you want to see the cost per lead or something like that? Let's see if the cost per lead. So this one actually doesn't have a lead, but we can actually pull up over here. If there's not the column that you want, there's so many different options. You can look through this. You can see the cost per like, the cost per engagement, so many different things. You can search them up here. But let's say we want to do cost per lead. Well, not cost per lead form. So let's do lead. So website lead, cost per website lead and move my head out of the way and insert so now as you can see we have website lead let's ask like let's also add cost per click or cost per unique link click but this is okay see 25 cents you can see all these so you're gonna have to pull up some of these you can save custom columns you can like these are presets so these will set different columns so you want to see performance and clicks you can switch to this uh, that just make, make, make might make it a little bit faster or you can set a custom one you can like customize the columns and set a custom one so that it kind of stays that way as well so over here you have the um, like overall the time span that you're looking at so most of the time I go by this month if I'm working with active clients and kind of do it that way or I might do even like this week or last seven days there's so many different options where you might even do a custom you I always change this this is always changing there's not like one thing I only look at um, so what else we got here that's pretty much it for the most part you start a campaign here or you can create an ad um, that's about it for this so let's walk through the rest so page post this is an important page that I do use pretty often I can talk about this when creating ads but uh, I do want to mention this now so you're gonna go to this page post thing and this is a very important page actually and I'll tell you why in a second so you're gonna learn how to create ads in a second but these post IDs so every time you create an ad it's going to pop up in here the post ID so if you're creating another ad you're going to want to copy this post ID and let me show you here in a sec you're going to want to copy this post ID and let's say you're making the same you're making the same ad a couple different times but you're doing different targeting for each ad this is very important so what you're going to do here is you're going to go to okay it's actually not showing up on this ad specifically because it's not applicable so let me get up a different one for you guys let's pull up this one here this one should be good okay so so you do use existing posts so the reason for doing this and I don't mean to confuse you guys or get too far ahead of yourself but I'm just going to make everything super clear you're gonna understand this in a second so don't worry about creating the actual ads this is just to get in your mind right now let's say you are doing multiple ads like you're doing the same ad the same picture um, you're doing the same exact ad you're doing the same video the same ad copy but you want to test between different audiences what you're gonna do is instead of just duplicating and don't worry I'm gonna talk about that in a sec instead of just duplicating the ones and getting the same thing what's gonna happen is every time you duplicate that and you just try to split test it it's gonna make a new page post every time but you do not want that the reason being is because each of these page posts that are in here are gonna have their own amount of likes and comments and everything so when you think about it you want 
even if you're doing different targeting, you still want all the ads to be the same so that they're all the likes and the comments are building up in one so it has more social proof. So the way you do that is if you're making multiple ads, you need to use that little post ID number and put it in here and do it that way. I'm not going to submit because I don't want to do that, but you submit it in here and you make sure all of your ads have that number submitted so that all of the traffic, all of the people are going, getting sent to the same ad and they're not getting sent to three different ads because every time you duplicate it, it creates a new one. You want to send people to the same one. So that's kind of a trick there. That's a very key that not very many people know or teach that I've seen. So what else do we got here? We got the power editor, which I'll go over in a sec here. Audience insights is pretty valuable. This can be valuable. The main way I use this is to come up with new audiences. The main way I use this really is to if I have an audience in mind and I want to figure out a cheaper way to target them, this is the main way I use this. Honestly, this isn't that useful in the way that we're going to do this for your local businesses. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this right now. But um, if you guys have any questions, I'll do a live on this in the, in the course group. So this, yeah, like I said, that's basically what it does. So you can plug in your interest here and kind of get the age ranges and et cetera, et cetera. Um, so what else do we have here? We have the power editor. These are not that important. Of course, they're all important, but pixels are important, but we'll go over that later. Audiences can be pretty helpful as well. So that's where you pull up. When you create an audience, a custom audience, they'll all show up in here. Catalogs is an advanced feature. Um, settings is kind of important, I guess. Of course, billing is pretty self-explanatory. Settings is pretty simple as well. Uh, but I'll just go through it real quickly with you guys. So let's go back to the ads manager because I want to show you guys a couple more things, I think. All right. So, yeah, we want to go to the power. We want to go to the power editor now and kind of walk you guys through that. And the difference between I, I for the most part, I honestly I use the um, I use the regular ads manager way more than the power editor. Now some people do only their work in the power editor and they swear by the power editor. But in my opinion, it's just a lot faster for the most scenarios. But really the power editor, it just allows you if you're trying to do a lot of split testing or trying to like, for example, if you are trying to, let's say you create a, and we're gonna talk about this in a sec. Let's say you create a conversion campaign. So you're going for leads and you start to figure out that you don't actually want to do conversions. You want to do traffic. Well, in the ads manager, you'd have to remake everything, but in the power editor, you can move it to a new campaign. So that's kind of some features that you kind of add some abilities in the power editor. It's the kind of the same concept. It just allows you to edit things more in a bulk fashion in a way. So that's the best way I can explain it. And there's so many different scenarios you can have with it, uh, which I'm not really going to go over because, it, I just want to get you guys straight to the point, get your focus on what you know, what you need to know. So let's go back to the ads manager to see if those settings loaded up. Uh, unfortunately, the settings didn't load up, but uh, one thing that I will mention, uh, something that you will need to, like you have your ad, I wanted to mention that your ad account number shows up here. Um, it also shows up here in the column in case you ever need to share your ad account number with someone to give them access. So settings aren't loading up, but that is pretty much it for this video. Settings are probably are pretty self-explanatory for the most part. So of course, if you guys have any other questions or you come across any problems, this should be pretty simple to understand. But let me actually go over duplicating ads real quick as well so that you can learn how to split test. Actually, let's leave that for another video. We're going to go do this on how to split test and optimize your ads. We'll go over that in that video. But besides that, see you guys in the next video. Okay, guys. So in this video, we're going to be going over the Facebook pixel what it is and how it works, how you set it up. Okay, so let's go open up a page right here and we're gonna go to my ClickFunnels and I'll show you guys a walkthrough of ClickFunnels later on. But uh, we're gonna log in here and pull this up and we're gonna pull up over here, this is how you access pixels, all tools. You're gonna be in, uh, you're gonna wanna be in whatever ad account you wanna make the pixel under. Um, and basically we're gonna go to pixels here All right, so as you can see, we got a pixel here, and basically what a Facebook pixel is, is it tracks the visitors to a website. So 
let's say you're running a Facebook ad, you're trying to get people to buy uh, a t-shirt on a website. You can set up your Facebook pixel so that every time somebody buys a, a, a t-shirt, it's going to show up on your Facebook pixel. So let me duplicate this real quick and go back into my ad account so you guys can see an example of this. Boom. And basically to every time somebody visits that website, the pixel is going to be fired. So this is what's going to happen when you have a pixel on. So we're going to go to lifetime so you guys can see the results. And we're going to turn on cost per lead. So as you can see here, cost per lead is 96 cents on this one specifically. Now you wouldn't be able to see cost per lead unless you have a Facebook pixel set up. You have to have a Facebook pixel set up. So let's show for you guys, for example, when you set up a, a conversion campaign is the one that uses the Facebook pixel the most or I guess the only one that really uses the Facebook pixel. They all use Facebook pixels, but this is the one that's revolved around the Facebook pixel and optimizes via your Facebook pixel. So your Facebook pixel shows up here, and once you have it in your website, it'll be green. And as you can see, you'll be able to, you'll be able to when you make an ad, you're gonna be able to choose from here. And when your pixel's set up, there's different things that your pixel can fire for. So if somebody visits a certain page on your website, Facebook is gonna know that that person that visited that website is a lead and it's going to track their visit of the website back to their Facebook and kind of figure out, hey, this person's Facebook account visited this website and then it's going to register as a lead. That's how, it, that's how everything works. So if somebody clicks on your ad, they visit your website, they put in their information, then they get to the thank you page. When they hit that thank you page, the pixel fires and then it tells Facebook, hey, this person became a lead and then Facebook says, links it back to their uh, Facebook account. And that's how it all links back together and then it shows up as a lead on your ad. So from here you can kind of choose whatever your pixel is. So as you can see there's lots of different options for pixel. You can have a checkout, you can have uh, ad payment info, you can have a purchase, you can make a custom one. Um, but lead is one, the one that you're going to be most often using when you're running ads for clients. So that's kind of an explanation of the Facebook pixel. How do you make one? How do you set it up? Well the most part, we're going to be setting it up inside of ClickFunnels, so that's the way I'm going to show you guys. It's so much easier than you'd expect. So let's go into our pixel here. I'm going to open this up, open up our pixel, and I'm going to show you guys an example. Um, let me pull up one of my pages. We'll pull up this one here. And we're going to press this. And you are also going to need to install the Facebook Pixel Helper, uh, which is basically a Google Chrome extension. And it will show you, this is how you can test your Facebook Pixel. So this, any website that you go to, you can notice any website that you go to, that's gonna be, if they have a Facebook Pixel, it's going to pop this up on here. And you just download that via Chrome. And see, as you can see, the, what, I, what this page is tracking is tracking page views only. So somebody comes here, it's going to track a page view in your Pixel. So once they put in their information, it's going to pop up their pixel again, but this time it's going to do lead because it knows the only way somebody got to this page is if they put in their information. So then it tracks the lead and then that's going to send that information back to Facebook that they became a lead. That's how it all works. But how do you actually set it up in ClickFunnels? It's actually very simple. You go to the settings over here and we're going to go back to pixel now that it's open. You're going to create, oop, <laughs> they create ad, my bad. But, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to basically Facebook is going to give you give me a pixel code here in a sec. All you do is you copy and paste this code into this part of the website, the head tracking code. Now, where this code goes is going to be different on every website that you use, but for the most part, like I said, we're going to be using ClickFunnels or another software. So, basically whatever software you're using, you can basically look up how to install Facebook Pixel on blank software or let's say if you're using a Squarespace website, you say how to install Facebook Pixel on Squarespace, you're going to have a super good tutorial for you. Okay, let's just go into this, but normally you got to be able to create a pixel. And what happens once you do it, once you create a pixel, is you go to setup here and you do manually call install the code and you copy this pixel code and then that's the one that you paste in the website where I just showed you inside the funnel settings and this is a uh, funnel wide tracking code. So any page in your funnel that somebody visits they're going to hit that pixel. But more specifically, you need to go into your thank you page or and go in edit page. This is an important part. This is how you actually track the lead. So we're going to go back and we're going to do add events. And you're going to do whatever kind of event is most 
that fits this best. And you're going to add generate lead. And we're going to copy this and we're going to stick it in the settings. We're going to do tracking code and put it in the header. As you can see, I already have it. Facebook track the lead. So it's going to track the lead when somebody hits this page. And now that and we have that funnel wide tracking code, then it's going to um, remember that as well. So that's how the Facebook pixel works. Let me guys, let me see if I can show you guys uh, creating a pixel real quickly. Okay, so we're going to go over here, go to pixels. And we're going to go to basically you'll be able to create a pixel here and you're just going to name it and you're basically just going to install the code just like I showed you. So I can only create one per account, so that's why I can't create one now. Let me see if I can maybe show you guys an account real quick that does not have a pixel installed. All right, so as you guys can see here, this is what it looks like when you don't have a pixel on your ad account. Basically, all you do is you create a pixel, you're going to name it, and then you're going to do the exact things that I just showed you. So that is how a Facebook pixel works, and that is how you install a Facebook pixel to a website. Hope you guys understand that. It's just keep it simple. That's all it is. It's super simple. It just tracks somebody back to their Facebook ad account. That's that's the real basis of it. Doesn't really it's not really anything fancier than that. The code sounds all confusing and stuff, but literally all you're doing is copying and pasting. So see you guys in the next video. Okay guys, so in this video we're we're going to be going over campaign objectives and what all they mean and which one you should choose. So to go and see the campaign objectives, we're going to start and create an ad here. And this is the main page we're going to be focusing on today. This is the campaign objective. How do you choose the right one? There's so many different options here. Okay, so let me eliminate a couple of these for you guys uh, that you probably aren't going to be using. You're not really going to be using brand awareness or reach. These are not that effective. Um, you're not going to be using app installs, really. You're not going to be using messages for the most part. Um, conversions we will be using quite a bit catalog sales and store visits we won't really be using okay so let's walk these through brand awareness these ones like I said I'm not gonna go over these ones cuz I, I don't want to waste you guys time they're just just not that effective because awareness is not good we're, we're trying to get businesses leads we're trying to get them engagement we're trying to get them specific things these are just really broad terms okay so uh, we're gonna so the way Facebook kind of categorizes each one of these it's gonna optimize for whatever is saying here So if you choose traffic is gonna optimize for as getting as much traffic as you want if you op, if you choose conversions It's gonna optimize for getting as much conversions as you want if you do engagement It's gonna go for as much engagement So what it's also gonna do is with no previous data Facebook is gonna like if you choose traffic Facebook is gonna go after people that have a known reputation to clicking a lot of stuff on Facebook if you choose engagement at the very beginning, Facebook's going to be like, oh, we have all these people that we know engage with stuff the most. And we're going to show your ads to these people first. Uh, if you choose conversions, we're going to show your ads to people that convert first. So that's how that works. And what's going to happen over time is Facebook is going to start to learn and generate more data. So um, the best long term one, if you're going for leads, is do the conversions. Now, there are times where traffic or engagement or video views can actually result in a lower cost per lead. The reason is because you kind of pay a little bit of a pre premium sometimes for the conversions because they're just, it's it's hard to explain, but the people that it's targeting are usually a little bit more, um, more often targeted and Facebook just makes you pay, pay a little bit more of a premium price for the conversions. Same thing with the lead generation as well. So. Facebook lead generation, the difference between this and conversions is Facebook has its own lead generation system. So it's kind of like a Facebook page inside of, it's kind of like a landing page inside of Facebook itself. And I, I'll do a whole nother video on this as well because this is an important topic to cover. Um, but basically that's the whole gist of it. You're going to be focusing on traffic, engagement, video views, conversions. Just think about what you want. Now, if you're wondering, hey, what's going to work better than another, then really the only thing that you can do to know for 100% sure is uh, test testing between the two. In my opinion, if you're, if you're planning on working with this client long term, conversions is typically the best. Now, keep this in mind. Most of these are going to work. If your ad is good, most of these are going to work. Um, what's gonna, The difference is going to come in when it's going to be a difference between how much it costs per lead. Like choosing a, the difference between a conversion and traffic is not going to make or break your ad. 
um, it's still gonna work if your ad is good. So if neither of these, like if one of them, if one of them doesn't work, it's probably not, this is not the problem. Most likely it's your ad or your offer. So don't worry about that. Um, if you're ever confused, just test between the two. But for the most part, I choose conversions. I've also heard people, sometimes occasionally I've heard people getting lower cost per leads through traffic and video views. But for the most part, from my personal experience, I've seen the best results with the conversions. But you can always test it if you're wondering what's actually going to be working best for you. So with that said, that's that's all of the campaign objectives that we're going to be using and the most important ones. Um, obviously, messages is pretty, pretty self-explanatory. This is if you're trying to get people to message the Facebook page. But besides that, I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, guys. So in this video, I'm going to be walking you through the process of creating your very first Facebook ad. And it's very simple. Facebook really does a great job compared to any other platform and helping you create your ad very simple. So all you do, get in your ad account, you want to create the ad in, go to create ad in the top right, and you're going to choose your consideration. Most For, for most of our purposes, we're going to be using conversions or lead generation. Now, I think most of you guys are honestly going to be using lead generation, so I'll cover this one in that video. Um, and conversions will... Uh, yeah, we'll co we already kind of covered that in the pixel video, so we'll just do lead generation for now because this is a really easy way um to do it so let's do it for let's uh we're gonna pretend that this is now we're gonna do it for an e-commerce store but let's pretend like it's more of a local business so let's say we're gonna do lead generation we're gonna do what the offer is let's do seven day pass well actually we'll do we'll, we'll pretend like it's a gym so our offer is gonna be a seven day pass we're doing lead generation for a seven day pass um and basically that's it so we'll copy this this is gonna be the name. We're doing lead generation. We're trying to get leads for our gym to get people to sign up for a seven day pass, a seven day free pass. So we put that in the name here. Now this is the way I typically name my ads. I do lead generation, what the offer is, and then I do who we're targeting. So maybe we're gonna be targeting lookalike, uh, customer lookalike. So now there's lots of different ways about targeting, which I'll go over here in a second, but for local businesses, honestly, targeting is very easy. So I'm going to choose a page here. I'm just going to do Billy Wilson. And I'm just going to run on, a, put, do my own page for now. Um, of course, you're going to pick whatever page your gym is on. And from here, you're going to choose your custom audience. So if you want to do that, you're going to upload, you're going to create new custom audience. You're going to upload your customer file and you're going to uh, get your, your, cust your uh, business to send you an Excel file of their customer list, you're gonna plug it in here. Facebook's gonna upload it, and then you can create a lookalike after you uploaded that. Um, and you can create a customer lookalike, and you can just keep the ages really wide. Uh, doesn't really matter. This is probably the easiest way to do your targeting out of any way. Uh, another way you can do is if you're doing a lot of, for most local businesses, you can just do age and gender is usually simple enough. Now you can get a little bit more complicated, and I could do like fitness interests and things like that. It might make the cost per lead one two dollars less like sometimes that happens you can split test these but i wouldn't you don't need to go all out you can always split test at the beginning if you want the main the only way you're going to know if an audience is better or not by is by split testing so you can try doing this and i'll show you guys how to split test really simply here in a second so we're going to do i'll just do look like like this uh, we're just let's actually do something else. Uh, I'm gonna leave the look like blank and I'm just gonna do like fitness or something Just to show you guys, but pretend you put a look like in here I'm just gonna do this for simplicity. You're gonna want to choose put the business's address in here and let's just say uh, I'm just gonna do a Latha, but you're normally gonna want to put their address uh, Copy and paste that from Google. You're gonna want to set this at like a, for a gym most of the time most businesses you can set like a 10 mile eight to eight to ten mile radius so this really just depends on how far you think somebody is willing to drive in your area because in different cities people are willing to drive different distances so somewhere like la somebody might be willing to drive about 10 miles but some maybe if you're in like a rural area maybe people will be willing to drive farther um so that that's just something to keep in mind so um boom we got our interest there if you want to use that but you don't have to keep in mind when you're using interests um, when other you're competing with other people that are also targeting these interests. So you in, add interests, you add behaviors, they're going to cost you more money than if you're not using any because you're bidding against other people at that point. 
Um, hopefully that makes sense. And also behaviors are even more expensive than interest. Keep that in mind because that's another option here. You can kind of browse if you're looking for this. You can browse through all these. You can start typing stuff. You can use the suggestions bar. There's lots of different things you can do. Um, so we got all this out of the way. Expand interests. We'll kind of explain every little thing. You don't have to do this, but sometimes, like if you think it might help to expand your interests. Now, a lot of times if you're doing split tests, you're, most of the time you're probably going to leave this off, but sometimes you might want to turn it on. Basically, it's pretty self-explanatory what it does. Connection type, this is if you want to only do target people that are liking their page. Sometimes you can also exclude people who like their page. Uh, that can be pretty important if they have, like, let's say it's a gym and it has 2,000 page likes. Maybe you don't want to target people that are already probably their customers. You can also exclude their customers. So you can put in their, if you have their customer list, you can exclude their customers. Um, and you also want to exclude people that become leads. So you're going to want to make a custom audience. Or you can... Like you don't have to do this, but uh, for your retargeting ads, you'll want to do that. Is exclude people that became leads, and we'll talk about that. So you can save the audiences and name the audiences as well, so you can be able to reuse them later. Now, editing placements, uh, you can do automatic or you can edit. Now, the benefit of editing, sometimes it can lower the cost, but if you're really confused, just do automatic. But most of the time, it's better to edit and just leave on feeds for the most part into what you're going to do. You're going to do turn off Instagram always. Um, just put it on feeds for now. That's usually pretty good. Well, I guess for lead forms, you can only do it on feeds and Instagram, so you don't even have to worry about that. You can just leave both of these on. And from there, basically, Instagram, you always want to make separate ads for because the way you write ads for Instagram is totally different. Well, you, are, you can write the same ad copy, but you will have to format it in a different way or else it's not going to be easily readable. And for example, you can't click links in the Instagram Caption. You can't click links, so that's something to keep in mind. You do not want to put a link in there. You're just, people are going to be confused and why they can't click the link. Daily budget. Usually, it depends how many things you're split, split testing. But if you're doing like a trial for a client, normally I do twenty dollars a day total. So if I am doing, um, if I'm doing two split tests, I'm going to put each at like eight dollars a day, and then I'm going to maybe run one retargeting ad for like one dollar a day, something like that. That's just to give me an example. Um, you can schedule it. You can set a start and end date. Now, I don't usually do this. Usually, I just do run my ad continuously starting today. That's usually what I do. But you just gotta remember to turn it off because if you leave it running forever, it is gonna run forever. So don't forget that. If you think you're a forgetful person, then make sure you put an end date on it and make sure you start it at like 12:01 a.m. Because one thing important to note: if you start it at like 11 o'clock a.m., uh, 11 o'clock p.m., sometimes Facebook will try to spend all of your ad spend before the day is up. So it doesn't happen every time. It's kind of a weird thing, but sometimes like, for example, if I had this at $20 a day, then sometimes Facebook will try to spend that whole $20 in a one hour period because the day's not over yet. It's, it's strange. So sometimes you can set the start date at like 12 o'clock PM. And then from there, you can just change it later if you need to extend it to more time. So from that, just leave your bid amount on automatic. This is not, entering manually bid is not necessarily whatsoever. Um, from there, you can continue. So you have to, of course, if you're doing a lead gen, you're going to have to view these terms and you're going to have to accept the terms. If you're doing a lead gen ad, they have special like regulations and stuff. But basically from there, you can continue. Oh yeah, this is one thing I wanted to mention as well. Yeah, like I said, naming your audiences. So take this little thing here and we are going to copy that. And we're going to paste it over here. Um, so we can be able to differentiate differentiate, differentiate our ad. So this is one thing. This is kind of an inside eye tip right here. If you see someone doesn't name their ads like this, or effectively, if, if they don't effectively name their ads, they kind of leave the generic stuff, then you kind of know they're not very good at Facebook ads, or at least they haven't run that many. Because if you're running a lot of ads, if you've ran a lot of ads, you'll get so confused on organizing them and stuff like that. So this is a way you can tell the difference between a newbie and somebody that actually knows their shit. If they name their ads good like this, you know they've probably ran a lot of ads for a lot of different businesses, or at least they learned from somebody that did. So you can add an Instagram placement here. You can choose between all these different things. Carousels are kind of an interesting style. Um, so we're just gonna do a video. For the most of our clients, we do videos. So we're gonna choose here, upload our video. Um, We'll just upload a random video. Well, that's going to take a while, so I'm not going to actually do that. But from there, you choose a thumbnail. You 
uh, can generate captions for it, which is actually very, very helpful to do captions. So I'd highly recommend doing captions. So there's a button that says, you usually gotta click on the thumbnail button when it shows up after you upload it. And then from there you go to the captions and generate captions automatically. You have to scroll down. It's kind of hard to see, but you have to scroll down. It doesn't look like there's a scroll button. You'll see what I'm talking about once you do it. You're going to scroll down to the captions and generate captions automatically. And then you have to go in there and manually edit them because Facebook's not going to generate them perfectly. You're going to have to edit them. They might say wrong, words wrong. But the captions help because not everybody wants to have their sound on on Facebook. Some people just like scroll. Like if they're at work, for example, they're not going to have their sound on and listen to a video. That's why it's good to have a backup as the captions because they do help. And they do also help grab people's attention. Like, for example, if somebody can't turn the sound on, they're not going to pay attention to an ad they have to have sound on for. They're just going to skip past it. So from there, you enter your caption in. Uh, usually, I write my captions inside Google Documents first, and then I copy them over because it's just easier to edit because, like, the box is only this big. So on here, the box is obviously – the page is a lot bigger, so it's just easier to write. That's why I write them in Google Docs first, and then I just copy and paste them into here. And then put the headline, newsfeed link description. I usually don't write these because these don't, don't actually show up that much anymore. This is a very important button right here. After you make your ad, you want to send this notification to Facebook so you can look at it on your phone. This is very important to make sure your ad looks very good on the phone because most people are going to see it on the phone. And what I mean by that, for example, is making sure your call to action is above the see more button on your phone, making sure that your indentations look good, and etc. And you can edit things before you actually put the ad out if you use this button right here. So that's a very key thing to do. Call to action. Branded content, we don't need to worry about that. Conversion tracking, this is important, yes. So once you have your Facebook set up, pixel set up, like I showed you in the tutorial, you want to make sure this is always on no matter what kind of ad you're running. It's always good to have that on. And then from there, this is what it's like to create a lead form. So we're creating a lead form in this one specifically. Okay, so first thing you want to do before you do a lead form. Go and turn this to open. I don't know why Facebook starts that restricted, but put it to open. It's the stupidest thing ever, but just do it. So we're going to title our lead form like seven day pass. And what is the lead form? Basically, this is what it looks like here. So they're going to click on that button in your ad. And from there, uh, it's going to pop this open. You can have, there's so many different options here. You can do a higher intent or more volume. Uh, more volume is usually what I go with. That's fine. Intro is optional. Usually I skip the intro, so I turn that off. We want to have as least blocking things as possible. We're going to ask for their name, email, and phone number. If you want to ask more options, you can, of course. And then we're going to do like enter your info below to claim to claim your seven seven day free pass. There you go. Simple as that. Capitalize the first words of the letters. Make it look nice. I'm not going to do them all because it's just taking up time. But you guys get the idea. Um, so from there, what happens when they click your ad, they're going to click the button that's like sign up to get your free pass. You got to tell them in the call to action, sign up to get your free pass. And then they're going to click the button. This form is going to pop up and there's going to be a little image of whatever the ad, like the same image or the same video that the ad shows up is going to show up here. And from there, their email, their full name and their phone number is going to auto fill. This is the key thing with lead forms here. Now, of course, this part is not going to be included with any other kind of ad, but uh, I would suggest after testing out landing pages and lead forms, you can always test between the two. Um, there's benefits and downsides to lead pages versus landing landing pages. I mean, lead forms to versus landing pages. There's benefits and downsides to each. Um, one thing I will go in and over in another video soon is how to like actually get the phone leads texted to your client, um, which you need a special software for to to automatically send those leads over to your client. So I'll talk about that in another video, um, which is another important thing that you have to set up if you're going to use lead form ads. So from here, we have this information. We have our custom questions. Simple, super simple. So like I said, it automatically inputs their information. All they have to do is press the submit button because Facebook already has this information. It autofills it. It's already there. When they press this up, all they press is submit. Privacy policy. This is an important thing. So the way you can make this, if you now you're gonna want ClickFunnels as well. It's just ClickFunnels or another landing page software. There's ways to get around this, but how are you going to do this? You need a privacy policy if you're going to make a lead form ad. Uh, you can go on Google and search privacy policy 
template and just copy and paste it. It's that easy. There's plenty of free ones out there and you can do that and you're going to put a link to your privacy policy, which I'm going to show you how to do in a second as this loads up. So we'll wait here. Now, thank you screen. What are we going to do here? We're going to say, thanks, you're all set. And we're basically going to tell the client, um, what like our gym representative will reach out to you shortly to schedule your seven day to schedule your tour or whatever you want to say like you have to come in between these certain times which i'll be able to show you guys later what exactly i mean um you see uh, you have to to finish finish claiming your seven day free pass um you have to come out come in within the next 48 hours if you don't your free pass will expire etc etc you kind of say things along those lines just make it sound a little bit better a little bit nicer Basically, you can give them a heads up that they're going to get called shortly uh, to schedule a tour or whatever it may be. And then from there, you can ask them if you want to like visit our Facebook page or visit your website. I usually do one of those too. This isn't a very important thing. But uh, you can also upsell them if you want. Like for example, let's think if you're doing a real estate agent and you're, you want to like the first thing is you're getting a list of homes. And then from there, you want to say, oh, would you also like this guide? Then you can say, oh, you can click the button below to get your free guide as well. So you can upsell them as well. So you, from there, you could actually take them to a landing page after this if they wanted, if you wanted to. So what are your other options? So we're going to go into here, browse our funnels, show you guys what I mean here. Privacy policy. And let's just go into this funnel. We'll go into any funnel. And what you're going to do is you're going to create a new funnel step. And this is going to be the same for whatever kind of landing page software you're using. Uh, let's actually go to one where I have an example already. Let me think. I should have one in here. Privacy policy. So what you're going to do is you're going to create a new step. Put your name as privacy policy. And then you're going to choose the template. Search in the thing that chooses the template and type in blank. <clears throat> you're going to pull up a blank page. And then you're, all you're going to do is you're going to put like a... All you're going to do here is... And don't worry, guys, we're going to be going over click funnels and landing pages in the next couple of modules, so don't get too worried. You're going to plus this plus button. You're going to add a paragraph in. You're going to copy and paste it into here, save it, go back, put the title privacy policy. After you get that in there, you're going to copy the link, throw it inside of Facebook because you have to have a privacy policy in order to use a lead form. That's it. That's how you create a lead form ad. Uh, conversion ad, the only difference between that is a couple of small settings. So actually, let me go over that real quickly just so you guys can see. All you do from there is just confirm your ad. And also to split test your ad, let me show you guys real quick. So this is one of my campaigns. So to split test an ad, all you do is duplicate this button here. You're going to go in and it's going to pull up a little thing like this. And then from there, you're going to edit the name. You're going to edit whatever you want to edit, whatever you want to split test between and basically the way you want to split test most of the time is within the ad set so you most like 95 percent of the time i split test in the ad set if you split test in the ads if you're trying to try for example if you want to do a different video or a different picture then if you split test in here facebook is going to optimize really quickly and you're not going to get a good split test going because facebook is going to really choose one ad at the very like at the very beginning it's going to be like uh when you spend like two dollars facebook's going to start the start to lean towards one or the other. And really spending $2 isn't really enough to tell which one's actually better. So to do a really good split test, <clears throat> I typically recommend doing split test in here. And now you will notice that you can create split tests, which I'm gonna show you here in a second. So let's start over. Let me show you guys conversions ads so you can see the difference. Uh, I'm not gonna name it because I already showed you guys how to do that. But basically once you have a pixel set up, you're gonna choose a conversion type here. Whatever kind of conversion type we're, we're doing, usually it's gonna be lead most of the time. You can do an offer, but we're not going to worry about this. Uh, offers are something I use very rarely, and I wouldn't really suggest them, so we don't need to worry about that. Same, everything's the same here. Everything's the same here. Your placements are a little bit different, and so now you have more options, but I'd still suggest turning all of these off. Unless you're doing retargeting ads. If you're doing retargeting ads, I would suggest keeping them all on. But if you're just doing regular, if you're doing the main ads on the front end, I would suggest only these couple turn on. Um, mobile devices can, if you're trying to sell something online, sometimes it's better to do only connected to Wi-Fi. <clears throat> same thing here, same thing here, but this one's very key. Make sure you turn this one to one day click. It's basically optimizing on how soon you want people to convert. You want them to convert instantly the same day they see this ad, you want them to convert. You want to always change that to one day click. So next page, 
You go over here, we got the same deal, same deal, everything's the same, and that's pretty much it. So we're gonna do single video again. You guys get it, you're putting in a website URL this time because you don't have that. You just copy and paste the ClickFunnels URL, whatever URL you're using. And that's pretty much it. Make sure your pixel's turned on, which it should be already if it's a conversion ad, you don't really have an option there. But that's how you run a conversion ad. This is how you create Facebook ads. So I'll see you guys in the next video. What's up guys? So in this video, we're gonna be going over how to run Instagram ads. And I know you guys may already know how to do this, but there's a trick to it. Running Instagram ads must always be different than your Facebook ads. And there's a couple of reasons why. So it's really important to watch this video if you're gonna run ads on Instagram, because you, you may already know how to do it, but there's some tricks that you really need to understand if you have not run a ton of Instagram ads yet. Um, so first off, one thing I wanna mention, if you decide to run an ad, let's say you're running an ad for a gym, you're running a video, like they're doing a tour of their gym, you need to run separate ad sets for Instagram and Facebook. Now I know this doesn't show this here, but one of these should be Facebook, one is Instagram. Never run, oh, let me show you guys real quickly in the ads manager here. This is in the ad set column when you're creating an ad. You should never have, or almost never have, now retargeting ads, it might be a little bit okay, but I would try to never have Instagram and Facebook turned on at the same time because I'll show you, I'll explain why here in a second. One is because the one is because you won't be able to split test effectively. Uh, Facebook is going to automatically choose one of these that it likes better and stop running the other um, because that's just the way Facebook ads will work. But there's another reason that's even more important as to why you should not run the same ones. And this is right here. This is just an ad that I ran a while back. So let me pull this up right here. Fill, pull up the Facebook post so you can see. Um, you'll notice I have these little dots here. And the reason I have the dots is because on Facebook, if you have, if you don't like, obviously if you don't have the dots, it's going to show up just like a normal spaced out. But if you don't have, if you don't have these dots on Instagram, I'll show you guys Well, it'll basically move this up. Um, and it'll be just be like a huge block of text and it's going to be really hard for them to read. It's going to be really like, oh, this is a huge paragraph. I don't want to read this. So you have to put these like little dots like this to space out the messages. I don't know why Instagram does this, but it does. We have to put these little dots. And then the second thing is, this is the only two things you can use the exact ad copy besides this is obviously if you're doing lead ads, you just keep it the same. But for example, the button is under the video. It's above the text on Instagram, but on Facebook, the caption is above the picture. So obviously if you're saying click the watch more button, like click the apply now button below and you're reading it here, that's not going to make any sense. The apply button is above. So that's one thing of the wording you need to change. And then also if you're using a link, Links do not work in the Instagram caption. If you try to put a link here, it's gonna show up as normal text and look really dumb and people aren't gonna be able to click it. So make sure you always tell them to click the learn more link or the apply now link, whatever it is. And that's pretty much how you optimize Instagram ads. The only other thing is you can add these. Sometimes I add these little things here and I add this little red bar to my video. You guys can look up video tutorials on how to do this on YouTube. I'm not gonna go over that because that's not something I'm super into. But uh, I put this red bar here because there's no timer on the Instagram feed and they might be like, how long is this video going to be? Um, whereas on Facebook, there is a little timer and sometimes I'll make it a square because if you have a horizontal video on Instagram, it, it's kind of really small on the screen. Um, so sometimes I'll make it, I'll edit it into a square. You can get a video editor to do this. You can do it yourself and learn how, whatever you want to do. And sometimes I'll add a little title right here. So um, that's pretty much it for this video. That's how to optimize videos for Instagram. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, guys, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create custom audiences because this is a very important part of your targeting when creating Facebook ads. So um, you can create but you can create targeting inside of the ad sets here, or I'm going to give you another option, which I'm going to walk you through here in a second. So what it looks like when you're creating your ad, it's inside your ad set, what it's going to look like when you create a custom audience. So we're going to scroll down here to audience, and we're going to do create new, and we're going to do custom audience. So as you can see here, we have a lot of different options. We can upload a customer file. So let's say you have a client, they have 300 members, let's say they're a uh, chiropractor, I don't know, and they have 200 recurring clients. You can upload that customer file and what Facebook is gonna do then is basically match those files. They're gonna match those emails, match those phone numbers that you have. Basically you're gonna upset, uh, 
enter in a CSV file, which is basically just uh, an Excel file with a with like columns of their email, a column with their name, a column with their phone number. And if any of that information matches an account on Facebook, Facebook is going to link that back to their account. So you can basically, if you wanted to, target all of their current customers with Facebook ads. And I've done this many times before. So you can also do this with website traffic. The way this works is for the pixel, which I just showed you guys in the last video. Uh, you can also do this app activity. So this is more advanced. We're not going to be messing with apps, so we don't have to worry about this one. Offline activity, we don't need to worry about this either. This is if some, somebody calls your phone or something crazy like that. Um, we don't know. This isn't really used that often. The main three we're going to use is customer file, website traffic, and engagement. So engagement, when you click on engagement, you're going to see what happens here. So you can retarget people based on how much they've watched your video. So let's say you have an ad and it's a three minute long video. You can target people that watched one minute, 30 seconds or more of that video, um, which is very powerful because you can retarget them. So obviously if they're watching a minute and a half in a video, they're gonna be interested to some degree and maybe they just didn't take action. So you're gonna hit them with another ad again and saying basically like it might be a customer testimonial, might be uh, just a brand new ad, a brand new offer, but they're obviously interested in the first one, so we don't want to lose them now that they just didn't opt in or just didn't decide to do it. Um, so you can retarget somebody that completed a lead form. Um, you can do somebody. This one isn't really that. We're not really going to be using this one. Facebook page. Interact with your Facebook page. This can be helpful. Um, interact with your Instagram business profile. This can also be helpful. Interact with an event. So many different options. So. That's how you create a custom audience, and I mean, from there, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just do whatever the next step is, and we choose the audience. But from there, we also have what are called look-alike audiences. So to make a look-alike audience, first you have to create a custom audience, and then from there, you can create a look-alike off of that custom audience. So what happens when you do a look-alike? Let's see here. So let's do 50% video viewers. You choose a country. Most of the time, if we're doing local businesses, we're going to be using the United States, so we don't have to worry about that too much. And what a lookalike audience is going to do, it's basically going to take all of the people in the United States on Facebook. And from there, it is going, Facebook is going to find the 1% of people in the United States that are most similar to those, 50, those people that watch 50% of your video views. Or maybe it's most similar to the people that are already your customers. So you can, under, you can kind of get an idea in your head why that would be so powerful rather than going in and trying to figure out what kind of interest these people might have you can literally plug in your customers email list instead of doing all that work and create a lookalike audience off of that and eliminate all of the guesswork because facebook is going to do the hard work for you it's going to facebook is going to figure out hey what are the one percent of people that are most similar to the people that are already this person's customers so that way the work's already done for you so from there it's super easy you just create the lookalike audience. You're going to have this in here. You might have your customer's file. And you create a lookalike. So that is really how you create look uh, custom audiences. These customer audiences are so powerful. The main way you're going to be using custom audiences is for retargeting ads. So um, the way a retargeting ad, you're going to do this. You have your Facebook pixel like set up just like I showed you. Somebody visits your website. So you can target all website visitors. This is the one that I use a lot. Or you can do specific web pages. Or you can do somebody that became a lead. So, so let's say somebody you want to target all the people that went to your website, your lead page, your landing page. But you want to, so I'm not going to do it here, but you want to target all the people that visited your website. Custom audience. You want to do, uh, sorry, I keep clicking the wrong thing, but uh, let's see. Website traffic, you want to target all your website visitors. You create an audience called like website visitors, something like that. And then you're going to exclude the people that became leads because you might send them be like, uh, you might send a, a retargeting ad or a testimonial video. Let's say it's a gym. Uh, the first ad you're running is like a seven day free pass. They watch 50% of the video. Well, they visit the website and then from there they do not put their information in. What you're going to do instead of just letting that person that, that visited the website that obviously was interested, Instead of, them, instead of letting them get away, you're going to start showing them even more ads. You're going to make it seem like the business that you're working with is everywhere to that. And the powerful part of this is you can make a business seem like they're everywhere and that they're spending so much money on advertising even when they're not. Because you can just make it so that somebody watches a video, 
they're interested, you can make their ads. You can basically set all of your business's ads out to go out to those people. And you can kind of use that as a big selling point to your clients. Like we're going to make you look like you're everywhere and that you have an enormous ad budget to a small amount of people, but it's only going to be to the right people. And because we're retargeting, it's going to be a super low cost uh, as far as how many it's going to be super low cost because we're not targeting that many people. So that's how that all works. And you'll want to exclude like leads if you want to retarget people to try to get them back into the funnel. And you basically do the same thing there. You create a new custom audience that's called like website leads or seven day pass leads, whatever you want to call it. But that is how you create custom audiences. Let me show you guys another way of doing it. And you can see all your customer audiences. So you get audiences over here and under the assets column. And this is where you can see all the audience that you created, how much, how many people are inside of each one, and et cetera, et cetera. So from there, you can also create one here, as you can see. But uh, I most of the time do it in the ads, unless I'm trying to make a lot of audiences in bulk. I don't really go here, but uh, that is another option for you. So see you guys in the next video. All right, what's up, guys? Today in this video, we're going to be going over offers and how to create an offer. What is an offer? for your Facebook lead generation ads. So you can actually bring leads to your Facebook ad clients. So what are some other names for offers first here? So you guys don't get confused. Um, some other things, uh, some other words for offers are lead magnets, bait. There's a couple others, but those are the main three that they use. So if you hear something similar to that, know that once somebody's talking about, it's just an offer because you're gonna hear that thrown around quite often. So with that said, what are some methods for coming up with bait? And that's what this video is all about. How, is this, how do we come up? with the perfect offer, the perfect bait, because honestly, this is the most important thing when it comes to your Facebook ads. If your bait, your offer is good, then your ad is most likely gonna do good. You can't, like this is the one most important thing with any of your Facebook ads. If your Facebook ads don't work, this is the most likely reason they're not gonna work. So what are some ways you come up with bait? Um, one of the best ways that you're actually gonna know is with our Facebook group that we're having with this course since you got in this, um, another way, two other ways, the ways that I did them personally was the main way I did was Facebook ad research and literally reaching out to everyone that I knew that had possibly reached. When I first started, I reached out to anyone that I knew that had run Facebook ads and just messaged them. Hey, what did you use for bait for this niche? And I did hours of research, compiling all of the types of offers that I could possibly use. But luckily for you guys, you don't have to do that as much. Just ask, just send a message over in our Facebook group. And I'm sure I can respond or somebody else is going to already know and have the answer for you. So we're going to go over some offers types of bait in this video. Another way you can do is a Groupon, but keep in mind if you do kind of a Groupon type off offer, it's most of the time it's better to do kind of like free, not always, but Groupon is a good method for coming up with ideas on what you can offer as well. Kind of some industry standard stuff. And um, I'll go over some, some examples later on in these modules. You might see some examples ads from like chiropractors fitness so like for example an, an, a pretty common chiropractor offer is like a free dinner uh, with the chiropractor or like a free adjustment well not a free but like a low cost adjustment exam etc another one for a dentist is like a free teeth cleaning or like a low cost exam x-ray etc another way you can actually come up with a bait which is an interesting one that I've done before personally is a survey but the main thing with doing a bait is you cannot you have to put yourself in the mind of the customer what is the customer gonna want if you were a customer if you were like trying to sell your home what would you want what would benefit you what would make you want something so bad that you would be willing to type in your name phone or email for it because that's not just an easy barrier you got to want it bad if you want to actually if you're actually gonna go ahead and put your phone number in there because you know you're gonna get called you gotta want it bad so you need to think about that in your head put yourself in the shoes of the customer uh, what you would be willing to do and keep in mind think about how you can help the customer what is the customer going to want that's what this is all about this is the most important part of creating your Facebook ad so let me give you guys some examples of types of offers you can use um, you can do better so the better you offer the better results I already went over this so the perceived this is a key term the perceived value of your offer so your offer doesn't have to be the greatest office offer ever but if you can make it sound like the greatest offer ever and this is a pretty good skill. This is a really big copywriting skill. If you can make it sound like it's the best offer better, like I'm going to talk about this in the next video on writing, uh, on doing copywriting, which is a, like, that would be a huge, important video and super valuable. For example, one of my offers when I first started out was a giveaway for free coffee for a year. 
but keep in mind the coffee was just once a month now the people that actually wanted they were not uh, they weren't upset that the coffee was only once per month they were actually just happy that they had won something so free coffee for a year sounds like an amazing offer but really the cost of that like what's the cost of a cup of coffee one coffee per month to the actual business it's so low it doesn't even affect them basically so with that said think about what the perceived value is and how you can make it sound better maybe than it really is but you don't want to you also don't want to mislead people so if you do something that's a little bit misleading then make sure you mention that later in the post so for example with that coffee shop I actually mentioned later in the post that it is going to be once per month so it's we don't want to mislead people um, but at the same time the perceived value is very important so what are some other types of offers an extreme low price you can do a free ebook that's a really good one actually for certain types of niches so every niche has offers that work better for them so for example I've noticed uh, higher end niches do really good with ebooks and things like that. So real estate, sometimes car dealerships, um, even put like things like landscaping and things like that. I've noticed ebooks can be a really effective one. You kind of have to just come up with a clickbait title that somebody's willing enough to put in their information. And then what you do after that is you have them call the lead and walk them through whatever guide you gave them. So just just provide them with free value, and that's what. I mean, that can really help build a lot of report for a business. Um, so a free trial or a week. So you can also do like a gym membership. You can do a seven day free pass to a gym. You can do a free session. So like a one on one personal training session, um, free session. You can do a free consultation, but never use the word consultation in your offers. Never make your offer a consultation. That is so boring that it will never like it'll never work. I've seen so many people make that mistake. Do not do like a free consultation. If you do do something like that, you got to make it sound really, really fancy, really exciting that somebody wants to do it. Like they're excited enough to put in their phone number because I can guarantee you nobody's going to put in the damn phone number for a free consultation unless their family member died and they're like they're basically forced to do a free consultation. Like nobody's going to do that. Nobody's going to do that. Free webinar. Now, this is a little bit more advanced one, but. That is some, an offer that's good. A free quote. This isn't the best offer, but uh, a free quote is a pretty good offer at times. Like, for example, an insurance agent. But you have to word it in a very good way to make it actually work. So it is a little bit difficult. Um, I, I can show you, I'm going to show you guys some examples of ads later on in the modules. But I'm going to show you guys some co copywriting skills to make these offers sound sexy as hell in the next video. So I'm, I'm really excited for that one. But... Last thing before I end this, I'm going to show you this and show you the survey. So you're already familiar with the value ladder at this point, but the reason I threw it again in this video is because sometimes, like I said, your clients will be upset that they're having to give something away for free. Like they're just going to say, they're going to have an objection that we don't want to give something away for free. And sometimes you can't overbreak that and there's nothing you can do there, but you can always help them by realizing and one thing to note too, a lot of sometimes giving away stuff for free is better than doing a discounted price. Not always, but sometimes better. Now it's kind of an iffy thing. So sometimes free people, you kind of get tire kickers, which basically means people that are going to try the free thing and then not do it. That does happen, but not nearly as often as you would think. Um, most of the time, if you live in like a, a medium, an average or above average like uh, area, like income wise, then most of the time people, when they do a free offer they're not going to expect that they're not going to ex they're not going to just use it for the sake of using it most of the time they know that there's a little bit of a obligation behind it like they're going to take a free week pass to the gym like they know they, they understand that there is like a little bit of an obligation to stay with them and enjoy but now of course it's not 100 percent obligation but there is some level of obligation to do that so sometimes the nice thing between free and discounted like there's there's benefits and downsides like you guys just have to test them out and see what works best for you and what works best for your niche and which one your client likes better but free is basically because when you do discounted stuff sometimes people will kind of expect discounts not always but it can be a good way to get them through the door like the discounts still are very powerful but sometimes free is powerful as well even more powerful sometimes less powerful it really depends because the benefit of doing a discount is that you mean you could basically the benefit of doing a discount is you got the customer to pull out their credit card so you know they're they're willing to spend some kind of money but with free you don't know if somebody's willing to pay for this or not like they might just be taking the free so there's benefits and downsides but it's not a huge deal 
You just got to be able to explain to your client the value ladder, why we're giving something away for free. You got to be able to explain this very effectively to them um, because it really can make or break the business. Um, so like I said, if you need to go back and watch that video to be able to explain that to them, do that. But lastly, let's leave you guys off with a survey so you can see an example survey. Um, this is where you can really get in the mind of the customer and think about what, like you don't have to do a survey for every customer. This is just if you're really confused on what the heck you're doing and you want to take a client really seriously and you're not really getting any results, you can actually get a, go ahead and do a customer survey. And if you want, you can have just your random people do it. You want at least like 15 responses and you basically ask some really questions to just get hard feedback on. And you want to make people pretend if they're already a customer of whatever services you want to make them pretend like they're a brand new customer seeing this for the first time. Now you guys can read through these questions right here. Like how would you purchase this product? Of course this one's a product. So you want to change these words out, but you can use whatever kind of questions you want. But the reason I made this is just really gather information on whether this product was good, whether this offer was good. Um, what kind of offer would they like, et cetera, et cetera. So this is where you kind of have to get creative with your wording. And sometimes I ask more than the one, I ask the same question basically twice, but I ask them in a little bit different way to get some really good responses. So I'm scrolling through these real quick and give me some, some ideas. Like you might ask, for example, what would be your main objection for coming into this specific chiropractor? Um, like what would make you want to come into this chiropractor? Would you be, would you come into this chiropractor if they offered you this, such and such? Getting feedback from people, even if it's from other digital marketers or something outside people, is can be very helpful because sometimes you get stuck in your head, you're trying to create an offer, come up with a good idea, but you're not really sure. Get feedback from other people because it's hard to make the right decision completely by yourself and ask whatever their, their typical customer is what their thoughts on your offer. Once you come up with it, get some feedback on whatever offer you're providing to make sure you actually are gonna, it is gonna work at least fairly well. Now, if you're asking in the Facebook group, I can pretty much guarantee you the offers I recommend you are gonna work. So I would go with that, hit that first, but this is just a backup thing so you guys can know how to create offers. But with that said, that's the end of this video. This was an important video, so I didn't mean to make it too long, but it is really important, so that's why I wanted to hit on this really hard. But see you guys in the next one. What's up, guys? In this video, we're gonna be going over how to write killer Facebook ads. And before I even jump into this, I want to let you guys know this is going to be one of the most valuable videos in this course. And at the end, I'm also going to be, well, actually down below, you'll have access to some ad templates that I'm going to go over in this video. So with that said, let's jump right into it. I'm really excited to share this one with you guys. To be completely honest, this kind of stuff, I could make a whole course over this on its own. So I'm really excited to share this with you. So with that said, what is copywriting? And I'm going to be, the reason I'm going over this is in case you guys don't know already, um, I may mention this word a couple times. Basically, copywriting is the act of writing text for the purpose of advertising or other forms of marketing. So basically, it is persuasive writing. So let's go over this first. What are some of the main components of an ad when you're, you're going to be writing them? Obviously, you're going to have the caption here, but what are the main points? Well, the first one is the hook, where you're going to grab people's attention. So as you can see here, the hook in this specific ad is, hey, Olay, the homeowners, are you looking to sell your home but not sure how you can get the quickest bang for your buck? The hook is important in the fact that you need to grab their attention. You're going to get, you need to think about somebody scrolling down Facebook, what's going to capture their attention. And one of the things, key things here that I always typically mention is the city name or specifically like who you're targeting. Because if they see this, they're going to instantly think, Hey, I need to read this. This must apply to me. This must be important. Um, then the next thing we have is pain points. Now you don't have to always have pain points in an ad, but this is something I often have. I know many of you struggle with having the time and capital to do large home improvement projects. And basically, as you can see, this is a free seller's guide for a real estate agent. Um, basically, the reason we're pointing out pain points is to give people that are possibly homeowners something to relate to. Um, and this is something that they're going to relate to. And you really need to. And this is the thing that you need to remember throughout copywriting is put yourself in the shoes of the customer. Um, even ask customers if you need to. Always get feedback on your copywriting. Um, if you need to. So basically the next thing I, I go into is the solution and there's more components than this, but these are the main ones that we're going to be using. Um, the, then we get into the solution number three. So this week I put this together seven tips so that you can use to basically fix this problem. Um, and then number four is the offer and that that's the same offer 
the same thing right there. And then lastly, we have the call to action. So that is click the download, get download button below to get your free PDF email to you today. They press the download button below. And this is basically a story here to make them relate more and just get more familiar with this real estate agent. This isn't 100% necessary, but the reason this is in there is to basically build a relationship and tell people why they created this guide in the first place. Because sometimes that is a helpful thing, which I'll talk about in a sec. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the goals of your writing, because you need to remember the goals of what you're writing when you're writing a Facebook ad or you're never going to get to where you're trying to be. So the first of which is to get your target customer to take action. So to do that, like I said, put yourself in the shoes of the customer. What's get in their mind. Think about what's going to cause them to take action. If the offer is not good enough, then the offer is going to be your problem. Um, you guys can get, a, get the idea there, but the main thing, the thing that's going to make the difference on any ad, the more than the most is the offer, the headline. And we'll talk about that here more in a second. You'll be able to see my other offers, headlines, etc. So the next thing is having people read all the way through because you actually have to, a lot of times you're going to have to get people to read through to actually get them to take action. So the first thing obviously is hooking people at the start. The next thing is evoking emotion or telling a story. So it's best, even better, if it relates to the person you're targeting. Because if you tell a relatable story, they're going to read all the way through and just be agreeing through it throughout. And then if you can get them to keep agreeing constantly, they're at the end, they're finally going to come to the conclusion that, yes, I want this offer, whatever this offer this person is offering me. If you kind of get them in the mood of saying yes. Uh, banking it easy to read, that's a big thing too. And you'll notice that also... Um, set, like one sentence is also becoming the new paragraph. <laughs> it just makes it easier to read. That's the way of today. Um, and simple to understand. This is an extremely important one. Um, I basically say when you're writing this, you need to make it simple, simple enough that a fifth grader can understand this because even though you're maybe you're probably writing for mostly adults, a uh, fifth grader needs to be able to understand it because I mean, let's, let's face it. People aren't, I, I shouldn't say this, but people aren't as smart as you think always, but at the same time they are. But the main reason we want to do this is because if you make it really easy to understand, there's not going to be any confusion because when you make things harder to understand, there just confusion comes into play and people are just going to leave. They're going to get distracted by other things that are more easy to understand. So the main thing is in here is making it easy to understand so that people read all the way through. You've probably experienced it before. You start reading something and then it just gets super confusing and then you just give up because you don't understand what the, even the point is. So if you make it really easy to understand, they're way more likely to stick with it. And so with that said, before I show you guys some real ads examples, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to show you some of the, tell you about some of the most common mistakes I see. Um, with people's ads. And the first one is grammar mistakes. Then now there's nothing really here I can personally do to help you with grammar mistakes. This just comes down to basic English. And, and I think the best way to do this is have somebody that's, if you're not very good at, like if you have grammar problems and stuff like that, it's probably best if you go get someone to review your ads after you make them to fix grammars. You, I'm sure you all probably know somebody that's good at English. So have somebody that is able to do that review your review your um, your ad copy and honestly I often have people review my ad copy even though there's no grammar mistakes just to get better and better every time see what suggestions they have see what they didn't understand clearly um, the second most common thing I see is not clear and quickly understandable both of these things so they need to be quickly understandable this comes into play with the fifth grader thing quickly understandable is key because people's time attention spans today are so short you need to make it so easily understandable that a fifth grade can fifth grader can understand it. Um, overly wordy and not easy to read. So this kind of comes. It's it's quick. It's fast. You want to make it as le the least amount of words as possible because if people see a huge paragraph, they're not going to want to read all the way through it because they're like, I don't have the time for this. So you want to condense that down as much as possible. Um, and then, and by reducing your words, that also makes it easier to understand a lot of times. And not easy to read, just like I was saying, if you have everything in one big paragraph, that's not easy to read. Whereas if you have things separated by like one line, one line, one line, sometimes that's easier to read because there's more space. You feel your mind just is more clear and there's not so many things confusing you and just kind of taking your attention all over the place. So the next thing I want to go over here is some mini tips and then we're going to jump into some more advanced tips. Um, so one of the, the first one of this is use emojis. The reason for this is when you're scrolling down the Facebook feed, it just grabs people's attention. Now, if you're working with a super professional client, that's like business to business, you might not use as many emojis. 
you can still use like conservative ones, but use things that pop out in the news feed that just grabs people's attention. Um, yes, this has been tested. And then once again, space out your writing. I already went over that and keep your call to action above the fold. Let me show you guys what I mean by that right here, right, right here real quick. Keep your call to actions above the fold. Um, when you're writing your Facebook ads, you're going to see the see more button. So basically, um, when this pops up, you want to make sure your call to action is above the see more button or else they're going to have to click, which a lot of people won't do. And they're not going to see the rest of your ad. They're not going to see the call to action. So if you can keep the call to action above that button that I just pressed, that'll be the best. And the way you have to do that is basically review your ads before you actually publish them. And the way you do that is basically by previewing your ad before you do it. So I'll show you guys that real quick. So basically to preview your ad, all you do is you press this little button. You can do share a link or any of the other options here. That's how you kind of look at your ad. Pull it up on your phone because your phone will actually look different than it does on the news feed and your phone is the most important. So like send notification to your phone. This isn't an option on this one, but you can send the link because this is an Instagram story. But that's how you do it. That's how you, sh then you can review it. See if your text is actually above that see more button. And if it is, you're good. So let's come back into the PowerPoint now. So next I'm going to go over my top tactic, and this is something you won't find very many other places. And I, I really love the slide that I put together for you guys. So the first one of which, and I'm going to show you guys uh, all of these in action in the next ads that I'm going to show you that I did for a client, a series of ads that I did for a client. So the first of this is scarcity, your top persuasion tactics, scarcity. So for example, only X spots left today only. This is basically getting people to take action now because it's not going to be available tomorrow. The next thing is asking agreeable yes questions, obvious yes questions, getting people agree, getting people feeling relatable. And if you get keep getting people to say yes, they're more likely to say yes on the offer as well. Um, answering possible objections before they even have the objections. This is a really good one because people are always going to have objections as to why they might not take the offer. Oh, I'm scared they're just going to use my phone number information for bad, whatever it is. Answering objections beforehand can sometimes, a lot of times, alleviate the fact that um, and make them feel more comfortable with actually putting their information in. So the next thing is, people don't talk about this enough, I don't think, is logical reasoning, and this kind of goes with the objections as well. Um, let me show, I'll show you guys more real life examples of these in a second. And then last, and this is a very key one that I see not very many people talk about, sexy wording, making your offers sound sexy as possible. And what I mean by that is making your offers sound as best as they possibly can, uh, perceived value, giving your offers more perceived value. So for example, uh, your offer could be a free consultation versus a see if you qualify for a new customer program. Now think about which one you would be more likely to do. Like free consultation, guys, let me tell you right now, never say the word consultation in your ad copy. It is terrible and it's not going to work. If you guys do an offer, a consultation as an offer, it's never going to work. I can guarantee you that. Make the word consultation sound sexy by being more specific or just working in a different way. Even strategy session is a little bit better than consultation, but strategy session is still not the, may, may not be the, be the best, but it's definitely better than consultation. So making sure you're using wording that sounds sexy. So let's jump into this real quick uh, to show you guys some examples. And I'm showing you this because this is a niche that nobody's really going to have, and it's going to give you some examples. And like I said, you guys can also check out the templates below this video and look over those as well. Um, so this is some examples from a, a company which basically sells seeds to farmers. The, the farmers get their seed supply for the year from them, uh, either corn or soybeans. So this is the company that I was working with to generate farmer leads. And I wanted to show you guys this one because this has got to be one of the hardest things you could possibly sell, getting a farmer to put in their information on a Facebook ad. Like, what do you think niche could be harder than that? That's why I wanted to show you guys this and show you that as the ad copy strategy used in this. So yeah, as you can see here, these are the emoji strategies used. And then this is the agreeable strategy I just talked about. How helpful would it be for you to know the four top performing soybean varieties in your area? Now, this isn't the best um, call to action because your local DSM will reach out to you with a personalized lineup. Still pretty good, but it could be a little bit better. They just didn't want to um, hide the fact that you can, actually, you can actually hide the salesman part of this as well and do like a downloadable guide and then have them call up to walk them through the downloadable guide. That's another trick you can do as well. Um, so this is one of the things that I was talking about as well. Answering objections, our reputation and family names on every bag and we want to earn your business. This is answering the objection of farmers that they may have like, oh, this is just another company. They're just going to mess with my information. Just going to keep spamming me with stuff. 
This is exactly answering that objection right there before they even may even have it. So this is another answering objection. No, this is not a sales pitch. I'm not going to read all the way through these. You guys can take a look and read through them if you'd like, but I'm not going to read all the way through this to save you as much time as possible. No, this is not a sales miss and it's purely to build our relationship. Now, this is kind of the same thing here. You guys can read it. Um, call to action. Same kind of deal here. How helpful would it be, etc. So we'll go jump to the next ad. Oh, yeah. Most important thing is the headline. That's going to be the biggest difference maker. And I, we have a video as well. Um, so video is important and all of these copywriting things I'm talking about, they also apply to video as well. So something important to remember. So next thing here we have, hey, so hey, Kansas soybean par farmers hook right there. Are you looking to increase your profitability here? It's kind of the same thing as a real estate one. So we'll go over that. So little as one day, this is kind of a thing. This is kind of a tactic that I didn't talk about yet is uh, so getting access today, instant access. That's a good one. And giving people, um, short-term things often works really good for some well we all know why it works because people are looking for shortcuts when you give shortcuts people are a lot more likely to take them that's a little thing here people are just looking for fast solutions all the time um, to be honest with you if you kind of use clickbait guides like this this can work for niches that are typically hard kind of clickbait stuff um, have you figured out what you're doing for seed financing this year this is the question um, and then we're offering the new customer program, potentially make an extra 3,500 this year. If you'd like to, so this is the scarcity tactic with only about a month before the next season, we're only uh, allowing only 10 more soybean farmers to join this year's special customer program. So we can be sure we have enough time to personally create. So this is, I'm giving them a, this is the thing. This is what separates me from a lot of copywriters, I believe. So most people would say with only a month before the next season, we're only allowing 10 more soybean farmers to join the new this year's special customer program. But I think where a lot of people fall short is by adding something, some logical reasoning that I talked about as to why we only have 10 spots left because people are always saying, oh, there's only 10 spots left. And half the time you guys probably already know it's BS. It's just stuff that they're making up. But when you actually give people a reason, whether it's true or not, they're a lot more likely to believe you. And believe that scarcity so we can be sure we have enough time to personally create the highest yielding strategy for each farmer uh, that's a really good tip that I have for you guys so kind of the same deal uh, there's another so let us work with you to find the top performing hybrids and we're, we're relating to the customer here because this is all wording that um, would appeal to the client and I didn't know where the wording that would appeal to farmers so I had to discuss with the the owner and know the right questions to ask to do this. So let's jump right back into the templates. I'll just guys give you guys an intro to that. Um, the little templates we have that I put up together for you. So these are here are the templates right here. Um, we got the basic one. This is just super simple. And basically here we have the layout and then I have an example of each underneath so you guys can get a complete idea. Got the basic with the testimonial. Um, pain points and these can really be used for any niche to be honest with you guys um, I just give you I just gave you examples from all different niches So you guys could use these templates and I pretty much use these same templates the same one two three four Five templates. I pretty much use all of these five on almost all of my ads It is ridiculous if you if I had to choose one that's the most popular for me probably this basic extended one um, I pretty much almost always use this ad copy unless I'm doing something for local businesses This is the ad copy that I typically use if I'm doing something else like an online course I'm going to do different ad copy, but uh, that's pretty much it And this is keep in mind. This is not your ads are not limited to these templates Okay, guys, you can write your ads. However, you like be creative. That's the main thing be original because if you're original um, don't just copy anyone be original because your ads that's how you become better than anyone else in the market You become original. Maybe you have this thing to you where your writing is really funny Make it like that make your writing funny because people like that if whatever your skill set is Accentuate that in your writing and just take pride in what you write and don't just copy everything um, Be unique and be your own person. That's all I have to say and I hope you guys enjoy this video I'll see you in the next one What's up guys in this video? I'm gonna be going over it how to optimize and split test your ads, which is a very important skill that you need to have going forward and figuring out how to actually make your ads work. Because a lot of times your Facebook ads might not work on the first try. And there's lots of reasons why you got to be able to figure out where the bottleneck in your Facebook ads are. This is a very important skill. Why split test? The most important thing when running Facebook ads 
the only way to know if something is going to work is to test it. So you have to get really skilled and you really have to have that analytical mindset to be figuring out how can I test different versions of this? How can I test two or three different offers? I'm, I'm, if you're not sure if an offer is going to work, I would highly suggest running two or three offers for the same business so that, and you can also message the Facebook group as well. If you don't have an idea for an offer or an offer that works, you need to be creative. Like for example, if you're doing a PDF guide, you need to think of a creative title for your PDF guide. Um, and you may try, like for example, to give you guys an example, when I have first had my first real estate client, I had no idea what kind of ad was going to work. So I tried three or four different things in the first week working together with them. Now it was a shit ton of work. I'm going to be honest with you. But the thing is, the whole point of this is to get your clients for good results in the first month. And it doesn't matter. Like it might take you, like the first month is always going to take a lot more work than recurring months. So that when those next couple months come, you're making a really good income from barely doing anything. To be honest with you, you might make some changes here, or there, you might put up a new ad here, or there, but for the most part, your time of work in the first month is probably going to be three, four times the amount in the following months. But even the time in the first month won't be very much once you, once you get a system down for a particular niche. So with that said, with your first client, you may want to test. Like unless you know an offer is going to work, you're pretty confident an offer is going to work. You want to, you may want to test between two or three different offers if you're not sure. And you might test between different audiences, but for the most part, for local businesses. The audience isn't going to really make a difference between whether it works or not. It's only going to make a difference between whether like the cost per lead. So for example, your targeting might make a difference between a $10 lead and an $8 lead, but it's not going to make the difference between it's not gonna, like if you're getting zero leads, it's not going to make a difference. So unless you're in a really particular niche um, with a very small part of the population being actual clients, like let's say for example, you're, you're doing wedding cakes, like a very small population of the, the clientele is going to be wedding cakes. So if you're doing broad targeting, obviously that's not going to work very effectively. Um, for that specifically, you're going to want to target somebody that's maybe interested in weddings or even better target someone that's recently engaged, which you actually can do through Facebook ads. Just give me an example. So you have to be creative in the targeting and really think about what kind of targeting you're not like what kind of different targeting you can do. You can do broad, you can do lookalike audiences like I showed you. You can do interest targeting. You can do demographic targeting, maybe only males. You can do like, for example, just like I said, um, you can do recently engaged people as a special targeting audience. And you're gonna wanna come up with a couple ideas and think about really hard which one's gonna be the best. So after you come up with that, if you're not sure, maybe you think that two might be the best, you're gonna split test those. So you create your ad just like I showed you in the last video, except you're gonna make a duplicate then you're just going to change the audience. I already showed you that in the last video, so I'm not going to just show that again. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you how you can optimize. So I'm just going to use a random ad, for example. So it looks like, so 10K followers. Let's find, this is an ad that I ran for an affiliate offer of a course. So let's kind of go through here and go some analytics on what all these mean. Um, and which one maybe performed the best. So as you can see here, this is an affiliate offer for uh, a course. I'm going to do it this way, but of course this works for any business. The reason I'm not going over one of my businesses because I'm trying to keep most of my businesses private for the most part. Um, so I'm using my own ads as an example, but you'll still get the same ideas out of it. So let's open all these up. Actually, we'll go back to the campaigns and just compare the campaigns. So you can see here, like what are the results? What is the cost per lead? The biggest thing out of anything is going to be your cost per lead. That's going to be the biggest determinant of how good your ad is doing. Obviously, that's the most important thing. You want the leads. Um, the other thing you can look at if you're trying to look at whether something's actually working, but you're trying to you're on a really low budget. Let's say that you want to see if an ad is working for a really low amount. Like, let's say you want to see if an ad is working. You've spent three dollars. You want to see if an ad is working. You're not going to know if it's working yet or not if you get a lead, but what you can do is you can break it down even further. Are you getting clicks? Have you gotten one or one, two or three clicks? If you're getting clicks then you're probably on the right track most likely. So how do you pull up clips? You add a custom column and you pull up clips, clicks. That's one way to do it. Obviously the, the easiest way to determine when you do your split test, which one's better is spend the same amount, spend $5 a day on both and see after seven days, which one has the lowest cost per lead? That's the easiest way, the most straightforward way 
Um, of course, you can do the same thing with clicks if you want to try to get it even sooner. But know that sometimes you might get unlucky. Sometimes it might be a fluke. Like sometimes an ad, one ad, you don't want to end your split test too early because if you end it too early, you don't have enough data to tell truly if the other one's bad or not. And that's kind of comes to a little st statistical play. But generally, three times the amount of your what you want, what your target lead cost is. Once you spend that, that should be a that should be enough. Maybe a little bit more, but that should be enough to tell. Um, typically, if you get like five to ten leads in, then you can kind of tell at that point which one's performing better. So from there, let's see. From there, a couple of other things that you're gonna need to know. Uh, you can always be split testing. There's always new things you can split test. There's always new things you can try. Now, how do you figure out if your ad's not working? How do you figure out what's causing the issue? There's a couple of different things. So if you're getting zero clicks, then obviously the issue is the ad itself because nobody's even interested in the ad enough to click on it. Now, if you're getting leads, if you're if you're getting clicks but you're not getting leads, that basically means something's wrong with your lead form or your landing page because you're getting a lot of clicks, you're not getting leads though because people are obviously interested in the ad but they're not interested in the landing page. That's how you tell the difference between whether the problem is with the ad or the problem is with the landing page. That's a very important way because I see so many so many people they're they're trying to like they're getting clicks on their ad. Um, I mean they're not getting any clicks on their ad, but they're saying the lead the landing page is the problem. No, the problem is your ad is not good enough because you're not even getting clicks. Uh, if you're not getting very many clicks, then your ad is the problem. If you're getting a lot of clicks but you're not getting leads, then your landing page is the problem. That's how you tell the difference. Um, yeah, and that's the that's really the most straightforward way to tell the difference. So another thing important to notice is you won't really this won't happen to you guys too often. But one thing to notice if you're overspending, um, and I'm gonna go over how to create Instagram ads in another video. But sometimes you can test between your Facebook ads and your Instagram ads. That's particularly for fitness. Sometimes Facebook Instagram ads will work better. Um, there's so many things you can split test between. You can split test between audiences. You can split test the the caption, the picture, the video. Literally, so many different things. I told you guys how to split test in the last video. Um, and let's see. Uh, I think that's pretty much everything. But another, another important thing to notice is make sure you like change the time frame. Make sure you're looking at the, the different time frames. And one thing important to look at is also when you're running an ad for a client for two to three months and you're starting to get uh, running them for a decent amount of time. One thing important to check is the frequency of the ads that you're running. So frequency. So you don't really want this to necessarily go, I probably wouldn't say in a month's time, you probably want to not go over like seven. Um, so this one's pretty high frequency, but if you're at these lower numbers, no problem, not a big deal whatsoever. Frequency is the amount of time somebody sees an ad. It's okay if somebody sees an ad three times in a month, like that's not very often. If they're seeing it 20 times in a month, you're probably wasting some money. So that's the thing there. If you're getting too many, then you can lower the ad spend um, that's a pretty good, good trick. Another thing as well, as far as pricing goes, you can do any amount, like the price doesn't matter. It just depends on how much your client is willing to spend. Typically, I spend $20 a day total and I split that, like if I'm splitting that with 10 different ads, I'm going to do two at each $2. If I'm splitting that between two different ads, I'm going to do two at $10. Like, like that's, that's how I'm going to do it. I'm just going to split up the ad budget more and it's going to take a little bit longer for the split test to work out. But it just depends like there's give and take you can split test different ages etc there's so many different things you can do but that's how you optimize your ads that's how you make sure they're working and that's how you figure out improvement so with that said hope you guys enjoy the video see you in the next one